This was Musa Kusa in 1980, the Libyan ambassador to London, but he was expelled for backing the assassination of Gaddafi opponents living in the UK. When he returned to Libya, he was chief of spies and some say Gaddafi's head of interrogation. This is Abu Salim prison, where Gaddafi once dumped political opponents. Mufta al-Thawadi spent nearly two decades here, eight years of it in isolation, in a cell with just a hole in the ceiling for light. It was here he came across Musa Kusa. While I was being questioned, Musa Kusa was electrocuting me in my neck with the electric rod. And then while I was talking, he told me, shut up, and struck me with the electric rod on my tooth here and broke it. When Tony Blair met with Gaddafi in 2004, Britain's improved relations had been mediated by Musa Kusa. And it was Britain he chose to defect to at the start of the uprising. He stayed for two weeks. Mufta al-Thawadi believes he should never have been allowed to leave. Musa Kusa practiced torture. Musa Kusa tried to give Western people the impression that this regime wasn't a criminal regime, and this in its own right is a crime. This is why it's imperative that the West, whether it's governments or people, must hand over this criminal to justice. But Musa Kusa is no longer in the West. We found him staying at this luxury resort in Qatar. Hello, Mr. Kusa, BBC Television. How many people are you responsible for torturing, Mr. Kusa, <laughs> over the years? How many people are you responsible for torturing, Mr. Kusa? Some of them you tortured yourself, didn't what you? What do you want? These are all questions. As further allegations emerge, it's likely the international criminal courts will want to discover more about Musa Kusa's role in crimes against humanity.